The newest rage for cognitive function is something that has been touted as something good for the brain for a very long time, but now it's coming full circle and we're seeing research in younger people, which is cool because a lot of times when we look at supplements for cognitive function, we're looking at supplements that improve cognitive impairment. So what I mean by that is a lot of times we see okay, well, this is going to help with your cognition as you get older, or it's going to stave off cognitive decline, which is very, 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 very important. But if you are worried about what's happening today, it's hard to get excited about that because you're not getting an actual boost from it. It's like saying, hey, you're going to take caffeine and you're going to live a year longer or something, but you're not going to actually get energy today. We all want it now, right? Well, we're talking about DHA, but you got to hear me out on this because there's a couple different ways that you can go about taking it that I think might get you different benefits. So let's look at this newer research. After today's video, you've got to check out this PEMF mat. So this pulse electromagnetic field mat from Bond Charge. So if you've seen me talk about the sauna blankets before, this biohacking company has come out with this super cool mat. So this mat uses like grounding technology and it uses all kinds of different waves. So it can send delta waves through your body, it can send alpha waves, beta waves, to change sort of your state and help you relax. It's really cool stuff. So if you're trying to improve your sleep, trying to improve your mood, trying to calm your central nervous system, it really is a game changer for that. Like I laid on it the first time and within 15 minutes, I felt like my state had completely shifted. I was much more relaxed, but they're also using red light therapy and they're also using infrared as well. So you're getting infrared heat. So you get this like relaxing effect when you lay on it. You're also getting 660 red light therapy as well. So you're getting the red light effect, but then you have five different settings for different PEMF settings. And what that means is you're basically sending small amounts of delta waves or small amounts of specific grounding waves to kind of change your body's feeling and how you feel. It's pretty cool. So you use it for like 10, 15 minutes per day and you just do it when you're meditating, you do it when you're doing breath work or anything like that. They deliver super, super fast, like worldwide shipping anywhere. And that link down below saves you some serious cashola. So that is a discount link down below using that code and that link. So after today's video, if you want to try something that's going to change how you feel pretty darn quick, at least in my opinion, check out Bond Charge's PEMF mat down below. So this study was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, and it was taking a look at younger subjects. So 18 to 45 years old, 176 of them. So it was a good sized study. Now what DHA is, is docosahexaenoic acid. It is part of fish oil. Okay, but fish oil is really touted for its EPA, eicosapentaenoic acid, because that's the biggest driver of inflammation modulation. So I love Andrew Huberman, he's a super good friend of mine. He talks about the benefits all the time about EPA. And I agree, like EPA is very important. Fish oil is good for modulation of inflammation. But now we're starting to see so much compelling data for younger populations to use DHA too, or possibly even more, it's really cool. So they had these subjects consume 1.16 grams of DHA per day for six months. Now to give you context, if you went down to your local Piggly Wiggly and you got yourself some fish oil, like from Walmart or something, you would find that it's probably like 200 milligrams of DHA per capsule and probably like a thousand or maybe 800, maybe 600 EPA. So you'd have to take at least five or six or seven to get yourself close to the amount that they were taking. So I definitely recommend you find a higher potency DHA one, which I'll talk about. I'm not, no particular supplement in mind, no brand. I just want to steer you the right way. Anyhow, what they found is that there are improvements in reaction time that were statistically significant. They also saw improvements in working memory and episodic memory. So what that means is in a matter of six months, these brains were changing. And what we're seeing as far as the mechanistic reason is that DHA incorporates into the cell membranes in the brain. So the way that I've sort of explained this, it's not entirely accurate, but it makes sense for metaphorical purposes. If you had a wall that was made out of, let's just say like wax paper or something like that, it would still keep out a lot of bad things. But if you were an electrical signal, you could transmit through that wax paper really quick. But if you had a wall made of concrete, it'd be a lot harder to send an electrical signal, right? Both things are protected to a certain degree, but a cell membrane that is more fluid, that has better integrity 
and can migrate and move. It allows for better signaling. It allows for better neurotransmission and allows for better plasticity. So as far as plasticity is concerned, that's the ability for the brain to change. Think plastic, like you can melt plastic and then mold it and then the plastic dries up again and it's in a new form. Your brain, you want it to be plastic. So DHA in essence was improving plasticity in these younger people, allowing their brains to get better and actually adapt. So it's like if you were to go to the gym, lift weights and never get stronger, you would have no adaptation. Just like if you were to study things and you never got smarter, there would be no adaptation. You want the brain to be able to change. They also found there's an increase in cerebral blood flow to the brain during cognitive demand. This is the sweet spot. This is what gets me excited because that means when the brain was being used, they saw an appropriate increase in blood flow to the brain. Not just like say, hey, here's a vasodilator and you have more blood flow to the brain in general. It was a stimulus induced blood flow increase to the brain, which means when you were head down actually trying to use your brain, you would pulse blood and get more there appropriately. So let's talk what to get here for a second. Okay, with any kind of fish oil, you wanna make sure that you are getting one that does not come from an ethyl ester, okay? It is not like an esteride version. You always wanna go for a triglyceride form whenever you can. Okay, you do not want those uh, forms that are just have chemicals added to it basically to stabilize. So a whole triglyceride form is always going to be the best bet. You just have to look on the back and look to see if it says ethyl esterified. Okay, be very careful with that. Uh, another option is to go with something like cod liver oil, which I talk about all the time. The nice thing with cod liver oil is you're getting vitamin A and vitamin D along with it, and you're getting a decent amount of DHA. Now, as far as food is concerned, you can get copious amounts of DHA from sardines, from mackerel, from anchovies, but that's not always realistic to bring on the road with you, especially if you're trying to like keep a consistent like one to two grams per day. Now, should you have DHA and no EPA? Absolutely not. You absolutely should have EPA too. But what you wanna do is go for possibly even a brand like Nordic Naturals, which I'm not sponsored by them, which has a little bit better ratio EPA to DHA. Okay, if you can find one that even has like 1,000 milligrams of EPA and four or 500 milligrams DHA, then you could get away with taking three of those capsules, get a nice amount of EPA, but still get sufficient DHA without overdoing the EPA. Because there is some evidence that mega dosing fish oil can actually inhibit some positive actions in the body. So you don't want to go overboard. Like Charles Poliquin for years talked about going crazy heavy on fish oil. We're now finding that you got to find that little sweet spot there. Now, another thing you want to look at is the stability. So things like krill oil are going to have these naturally occurring antioxidants that stabilize it a little bit more. So pay attention to that as well. Another hot tip with any kind of fish oil is keep it in the fridge. Like after you get it in the mail, put it in the fridge. It just has less chance of oxidizing because that's the problem we face is the oxidation of these omega-3s. So at the end of the day, if you want to boost your brain in the short term in something that's very real, docosahexaenoic acid's where it's at. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.